Hello. Today we're going to have a look at the second part of the refraction section of the waves unit in higher physics and we're going to look at a particular part of refraction called total internal reflection. Now here's what happens. We should know that when we've got light emerging from a material into air the light bends away from the normal. Now as the angle of incidence increases the angle of refraction increases at a greater rate. Therefore, we eventually get to a point where the angle of refraction is 90 degrees, where the light reflects right along the edge of the block at 90 degrees to the normal. Now, that occurs at an angle of instance called the critical angle. If we keep increasing the angle of instance above that value, we don't get any reflection at all, uh, don't get any refraction rather at all. Only reflection takes place. So that's known as total internal reflection. So as the angle of refraction increases, eventually it gets to 90 degrees and above that only reflection takes place. Now let's look at these three situations. If the angle of instance is small, 30 degrees in this case, that's less than the critical angle of this material and therefore we get refraction occurring and a bit of reflection. If we increase that angle of instance to the critical angle, 42 degrees in this case for this particular material, then the light is refracted at 90 degrees and we get slightly more reflection occurring. If we increase the angle of instance to an angle greater than the critical angle, 54 degrees in this case, then we get no refraction taking place, only reflection, total internal reflection. Now, how do we know what angle this critical angle is going to be? Well, it's different for all materials and different for different colors. And it relies on the number that we discovered in the last video, the refractive index. Here we've got light hitting the inside surface of the block equal to the critical angle and the angle of the refraction is 90 degrees. Now in the last video we learned about Snell's law, about the law regarding refraction of light in materials and we said that the angle, uh, the uh, critical angle is equal to sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 which is sine of the angle in the material divided by the sine sine of the angle in air rather divided by the sine of the angle in the material. So theta 1 the angle in air, theta 2 the angle in the material, the angle of instance in the material. Now in this case theta 1 is 90 degrees and theta 2 is the critical angle. So in this case we've got n equals sine 90 over sine of the critical angle. Now from your maths lessons you'll maybe remember that sine of 90 is 1. So actually we end up with the refractive index is equal to 1 divided by sine of the critical angle. Now we can rearrange this formula a little bit and we get sine theta c equals 1 over refractive index or indeed the critical angle is equal to the inverse sine of 1 over the refractive index which is quite a useful thing to remember. So let's put this into practice a little bit. Here's an example. The refractive index of a glass block is found to be 1.44 when red light is used. Part one, what is the value of the critical angle for this red light in the glass? So we have this formula, n equals one over sine theta c. We're trying to work out theta c, the critical angle. We have the refractive index of 1.44, so we can put those numbers into the formula, do a little bit of rearranging, and we get the critical angle to be 44 degrees. Here's the second part of the question. The diagram shows the path of two rays of this red light, PO and QO, in the glass. When rays PO and QO strike the glass air boundary, three further rays of light are observed. Copy and complete the diagram to show all five rays. So the two incoming rays and then the three further rays that are produced. 
So let's consider QO first. Now, what we need to remember is what we worked out in the last, uh, last part of the question, that the critical angle for this glass is 44 degrees. So we can see that QO is hitting the inside surface of the glass at an angle of 20 degrees, which is smaller than the critical angle. If the angle of instance is smaller than the critical angle, then we will get refraction and a bit of reflection as well. So we can find out the angle of refraction using our Snell's law formula, n equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. We know the refractive index is 1.44. We know theta 1 is the angle of refraction in air, which is what we're trying to find out, and the angle of instance 20 degrees in this case. So do a little bit of rearranging, and we get that the angle in air is 30 degrees. So we end up with a light ray refracting out of the block at an angle of 30 degrees, and we also have a ray reflecting back into the block at the same angle as the angle with which it hit the block at 20 degrees. That's just the law of reflection. So those are two of the rays that we see. The second one, PO, well, if you look at PO, we see that it's hitting the inside surface at an angle of 20 plus 25, which is 45 degrees. Now remember, our critical angle is 44 degrees. So this angle of instance is actually slightly greater than the critical angle. If the angle of instance is greater than the critical angle, then total internal reflection will occur, which means that light ray will reflect straight back into the glass at the same angle that it hit the glass block at in the first place. In this case, 45 degrees. So those are the three rays that are produced. The ray emerging at 30 degrees back into the air, the ray reflecting at 20 degrees back into the block, and the ray at 45 degrees reflecting back into the block as well. So that brings us to the end of this video and the end of the refraction part of the topic. In the next video, we're going to talk about the Bohr model of the atom and how that gives rise to line spectra. But until then, I hope you found this useful and I will see you again after a while. Bye for now.